So in this video we're going to attempt to repair a worn VR8 winch. Winch? Winch? Winch. In this video we're going to attempt to repair a clicking worn VR8 winch. Now the previous owner of this winch was out on the trail, went to use it and started getting a really bad clicking sound. Has no power in, no power out in terms of when they use the switch. They can free spool no problem but it doesn't power in or power out. So what we're going to do is go through a couple diagnostics to see what went bad on the winch. Is it the motor, the switch, the electric, electronics on the inside? Only time will tell. first test I'm just going to try to recreate what the owner was experiencing on the trail. So what I did was, I used, um, unfortunately all I have right now is a 12 volt battery that's in my Jeep. So I've rigged it up so it's connected directly to. This is what they claim to see. Both in and out and whether it's free spooled or locked, they get the same, same issue. So, what we're going to try to do is figure out how to jump the, jump the electronics here, the controller, and go right to the terminals. However, I'm looking at these terminals, and they look pretty corroded. So I'm just going to kind of do myself some due diligence and clean up some of these so I know I have a good connection. Um, this might just be, with luck, just a connection issue. So what we're doing now is we are checking to make sure that we have power getting past the switch. And we do. So, this might be that the motor is seized or frozen. So what we're going to do is take a look at this. So at least now we know that the solenoids are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I don't get confused here. I got this top lead as one, second lead as two, this back lead as number three. Okay, so I've got all the wires disconnected. I'm going to open these up, these brushes, and see if um, see if I can see anything, anything. So take a look. Take a bigger look, but 
This one. This one just looks like it got a lot of water in it. And I gotta wonder if this is a bad motor. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more now that I got it off. I should be able to get a little bit better torque on uh, the brushes. Maybe pull this out and start looking at it. But I, th I think the motor's probably shot, in which case I'll start pricing out another motor. So that's kind of it right now. All right, so this is this right here is the bottom brush or the bottom of um, one of the brushes. This is the access point, and I've been trying to get this damn thing off. And I, I'm just gonna roll something. I don't think I have the right torch bit. So I'm gonna attempt. Jumping this, everything's hooked up to my battery. All the leads are dead. So, I think the motor is shot on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and price a new motor. See what, uh, see what they're going for now. At this point I went online to try to source a genuine Warren motor replacement for the winch. Now I found that it was going to cost between 200 and 200 and Seventy dollars, depending on um, you know if I got it directly from Warren or one of their distributors. So I looked for a generic replacement. Um, I found a couple at seventy dollars, um, but to kind of keep the project moving along, I decided to actually source a place locally that um, specializes in rebuilding uh, twelve volt motors as well as uh, alters and uh, alternators and starters. So that's the route I went with. Okay, so. We got the motor back from being rebuilt, and the reason we came to that determination is that our test determined that when we put power through the electrical, the electrical system, we were getting power to the leads when the switch was engaged. Then we also jumpered the leads directly from the battery to the motor, and we were getting no, no, uh, no engagement, no movement. So we went ahead and rebuilt the motor and we are going to go ahead and see if everything works so let's put it back together so on this winch you can clock the motor a couple different ways there's a set pin here or a dowel so you just want to go ahead and put this in and have it set where you want it to be facing make sure This is your sudden done. There we go. Just gotta find maybe Okay. Okay. Then oops. There are two long bolts that go through the motor. All right, so these retaining bolts that go through the motor all the way to the housing here are 11 mil. So we're gonna go ahead, snug these up. Now these don't feel like they're really super solid. So I'm gonna snug these up, but I'm not gonna go super tight on them. Half an auger should be fine. Okay. Okay. Alright, we're reconnecting the leads. Now I had them numbered for each post that comes off the motor. So I have a good idea which ones are which. And I believe these are held in with a 15 mil, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry, 13 mil. So we're gonna go ahead and reconnect these. Now once again, tight and snug, not ugga ugga. Okay. 
once we snug these up, we're going to go ahead and put the rubber rubber coverings on them to prevent them from getting soaked. There we go. Uh, all right. And then we can't forget about our ground. Oops, sorry. Turn this over so we can see. All right. Turn it over. And we also need our ground. Electronics controls. And this, this again is also a 15, or I'm sorry, 13 millimeter. Okay. Not super, super tight, but tight enough. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and set up a table next to the next to uh, the Jeep and test the sucker out. All right. So now that we have the motor reassembled back on, I'm going to go ahead set up a table, um, connect the wires to my battery on my Jeep, and maybe suck up some of this. So now I'm going to try to clean it up, pull it out, and um, spool it up a little bit better. Um, so yeah, let's give it a shot. All right. Moment of truth. Success. So I'm going to go ahead, spool this up, and uh, I believe we have ourselves an, a really uh, a newly refurbished wrench. So we should be good to go for a little while. If you like what you've seen, please consider subscribing and thumbs up the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below.